All right, let's talk about sickle cell disease. Sickle cell disease is something you're going to definitely encounter on testing and as well in your, in your work in the hospital if you work in like a large med surge unit or, or ICU or something. So what happens with sickle cell disease is that it's a hereditary disorder, okay? That's really important to keep in mind. <clears throat> it's hereditary by the recessive trait and primarily affects African Americans. So it's a hereditary disorder that affects the hemoglobin's ability to carry oxygen, okay? the hemoglobin becomes less capable of carrying oxygen and that leads to misshapen RBCs, okay? So normally our RBCs are gonna be nice and round. And what happens here is that with sickle cell disease is our, our hemoglobin is less capable of carrying oxygen and so that leads to misshapen, okay? And it actually becomes like a sickle-shaped uh, hemoglobin, okay? So our RBCs become misshapen, okay? So again, it primarily affects African Americans by the recessive trait. And our major concern here with patients who have sickle cell disease is a sickle cell crisis. And this can be due to hypoxia, exercise, high altitude, and fever. So these conditions can lead to a, what's called a sickle cell crisis, which leads to an exacerbation of the symptoms of sickle cell disease. The main thing we're gonna see here, so as you can see here, we have our normally shaped RBCs, and then here would be a misshapen, a sickle cell, R, uh, RBC. And so these sickle cells, um, they, they cause clotting, they cause uh, coagulation, they cause uh, different things within our system. And so what happens is you can see this kind of, because they're, they're not shaped right, they don't go where they should, they don't flow like they should. Um, so this causes a big old pile up here, and so our RBCs are not able to pass through. That can cause pallor, fatigue, and then severe pain. Okay, all this pain can, can be caused by the, the misshapen, the, the decrease in flow that occurs as a result of our, our sickle cell. So the primary things we're going to do for our patient, okay, what does hemoglobin do in our RBCs? Well, hemoglobin carries oxygen, okay? So if we have less uh, hemoglobin within our RBCs, we're going to have less oxygen. So we need to supply supplemental oxygen to our patient. We're gonna increase fluid intake, we're gonna provide analgesia because they are going to be in, in severe pain, okay? We're also going to provide blood transfusion, okay? If their blood is, is half-sickled, right? If they have all these uh, sickled-celled RBCs, we're gonna provide them with, with fresh blood that's all perfectly looking RBCs, and that's going to dilute those sickle-celled uh, RBCs. So those are kind of going to be our major interventions for this. Sorry. Um, again, supplemental oxygen to um, try to provide the oxygen that they're not getting. Blood transfusion to get them the RBCs that are whole and complete. Analgesia for the pain and increased fluid intake. So when we provide blood to a patient, this is our blood compatibility chart. And I'll provide this here as a download. But I want you to print this out and I want you to have this available and I want you to study this. But you guys should already know there's four different blood types, A, B, A, A, and A, B. Um, and then we have our RH factor, which is either gonna be plus or negative, okay? So, <clears throat> again, O negative is the, is the universal donor and AB positive is our universal recipient, okay?